Raw. I'm a Vardy. Raw. Let's hope 19th century England is ready for the Jadoon. Coming soon from Big Finish Production. Michelangelo, who the blazes are you? Get back from the... Hello, people of the internet, Doctor Who fans alike. I am Henry Doonstar, welcoming you guys to my first foot song of the episode, Smile. It's better than I thought. It really was. Um, oh. Uh, I think the person who wrote this was Mike Barnard. I believe he remembers that. It's written by the same person who wrote the episode Forest and the Shite. Oh, sorry, Forest and the Night. Sorry, I get that mixed up with the time because it is a crap story. But I actually really enjoyed this one. I really thought it was going to be sort of quite crap, really, because emoji bots. Like. Just the concept alone, and they look. And when I was watching this, I was like, "Hey, I think I've seen this from Doctor Who before." And then for some reason, I was thinking of crap Doctor Who stories, and I was like, "Oh yeah, the crap is Patrick Troughton's story, The Dominators, the um, emoji boss. They're called the Bard, and that's actually a sick name. He's just a crap-looking monster. Are like modern equivalents to the Quarks. So." That's quite cool. Um, in this, uh, at the start, it felt um, that I felt there was quite a lot of drop. Uh, there was quite a big drop of quality after after the title sequence. I thought, yeah, Doctor Who has proper stepped up its game. If we look back 12 years ago when the reboot um, started and we sort of watch Ro uh, the Night Doctor and Rose running around in London, it has nothing on this episode. It looks beautiful. It really does. The camera and everything just makes you feel like you're on holiday. So, um, yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, um, uh, the ending, I felt was a little bit too forced. Uh, yeah. Moving on. Uh, Bill! Let's talk about her. So, Bill, I thought, was a really interesting companion this episode. I like at the, at the um, ah, I like at the start of the episode. I like at the start of the episode, um, we have, um, there, there's this knocking on the door and Bill asks, who's that? And the doctor goes, it's mum. And Nardo sort of walks in and is like, what are you doing? How is the TARDIS down here? It should be up there. It was, yeah, he was like a proper mum-like character. Um, so, yeah, so far Matt Luke's his weakest story. Yeah. Yeah, top 10 Nardole stories, let's do it. Let's do that Watch Mojo. Uh, invite me, Ting, hashtag. Hashtag came for Watch Mojo. Um, uh, yeah, but Bill, I thought was very interesting. At the start, yes, I thought she sort of really dropped. And when she sort of got out with her phone, I was like, oh no, they're writing Clara again. Yes, there were parts where she felt like Clara, but throughout this story, I could really believe that this is someone new entering a new sort of world. And I was like, well, this well done. This was a really great idea and great IP for a character. It was super she was super interesting. She actually did something useful and kind. And she also was just generally interesting as a companion. So, yeah, we haven't had that in ages. We haven't had that since Donna. Amazing, actually, isn't it? And of course, Peter Capaldi as the Doctor. Right, so my dad was actually watching this episode, not with me, um, where he lived. And he normally doesn't watch Doctor Who when it's not with me, but he decided to watch this one because, you know, because uh, I was probably going to be talking about it. 
And he literally rung me two minutes after the episode aired, and he was like, so what do you think of Peter Capaldi? I was like, yeah, he was great. And he was like, I'm really excited to grow on this Doctor. That really surprised me, and his uh, girlfriend, because my family divorced, she said, uh, her name's Sarah, she said, um, uh, she's starting to really like Peter Capaldi as well. I think that Peter Capaldi, they've finally found the right spot for him. Series 8 was, yes, a lot of people liked it and lots of people didn't like it because it was way too not for childish audiences because it was very clear. Series 9, they had, they had no idea what the fuck they were writing in the tour of Doctor 4. Sometimes it felt, yes, that's what felt up in like, Heaven sent under the lake and before the flood. Other times it felt like Peter Capaldi was trying to do a Matt Smith for some weird reason. This feels like a completely new Doctor. Even though some parts here feel slightly like Colin from Big Finish. But except for that, I really enjoyed it and I can't see any other Doctor in this sort of place. Maybe except for 6 and 8. No other Doctor I could really see with blinking emoji bots. It's so ridiculous. Uh, and I like in this that Bill asks questions that we've all sort of been wondering. She's sort of just like, you wear two hearts. What's going on with that? And she sort of really asks lots of weird sort of questions that were sort of like, why did no one think of this before? Why didn't TARDIS oh God, I think of this? We always think way too big, like, is uh, the, uh, what's his name, the war chief, is the war chief really the master? Why, what happened to the sixth doctor? Is Rory really the master? But then we've got Bill sort of asking, why do you have two hearts? Do you have really high blood pressure? And like the 12th doctor sort of like, yeah, sort of. So I can really see that in this story, I think if they had Nardo, bring back Nardo, hashtag bring back Nardo, um, it would have worked a tiny bit better. You know, Nardo from Husbands of River Song, uh, the Christmas special, not the Nardo from Flyer Pilot or this. The, uh, the classic Nardo, the one from back in my day. <laughs> um, Nardo, I think, would have worked a lot better because the 12th Doctor. Some parts, yes, he feels slightly over caricaturish, but I guess because he saw sort of, he hasn't done this in so long, and he's just, and he, you can really see he's sort of smiling on the inside, even though he's quite curious. And while saying smiling, that is sort of the main emphasis of the story. I like how original this story really is. It does not take any original concept at all. It builds upon new ones, and it's amazing. Also, there's sort of that. I could be wrong, but I think there was the woman from the Sarah Jane Adventures uh, in this at the start. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. Ooh. So interesting, and I really enjoyed it. And also, yeah, them like little pods with emoji but with yellow dots on it, they weren't Cybermen. They were little pods for humanized colonization. Now I won't spoil anything, but the ending feels a tiny bit too forced. Um, that's all I'm going to say, because this is just sort of my first thoughts on it. And um, there's so much I want to say, but I don't want to spoil it. So I'll wait till the DVD comes out of, uh, of Series 10, I'll get the Series 10 box set, and then I'll probably, in a year's time, I'll do a, like, a proper like in-depth review for DVD reviews. So yeah, sorry I didn't do uh, the pilot. I was a bit busy at that time. Um, so yes, Doctor Who's finally back. And also next week we have What's Under the Thames. Why is... Not Mona Monroe. That woman who wrote Face the Raven. Why is she ripping off Big Finish with Thin Ice? Have you killed someone, Doctor? In next episodes, they're nice.